Kincaid. You're watching The Morning Show on WCIA 3. Welcome, Central Illinois, to The Morning Show. We have a treat on this Tuesday morning because the James Webb Space Telescope is a piece of modern technology that is being used right now to look at our stars and planets light years away. And that's why this morning we've invited one of the operators responsible for one of the instruments because she's also going to be giving a lecture tomorrow. That's why we've invited Marsha Riki, who is joining us now, to talk about what exactly you're going to share tomorrow. But obviously you and I were just talking about, Marsha, how important it is that the public is aware of these these progresses. Absolutely. And so tomorrow I'm going to give people a sense of what it was like to build this complicated, expensive mission, um, how well it's working, and some of the fantastic things we're learning about it because the astronomy textbooks are going to have to change real soon now. <laughs> well, they won't be quite as visual or maybe even enticing as what we've seen with the telescope. Uh, you know, one of the, the bad things about astronomy textbooks is you have to get new ones every year because Absolutely. the pictures keep coming and keep coming and they're so beautiful. Well, obviously we've got to dive right into that, Marsha. Can you share with us some of the images that you've brought with you? Or? Sure, sure. I think we've got some. Okay, so, so maybe Marsha explain what we're looking at in this phone. So this is the telescope itself and because there's no one at L2, which is the place where this is orbiting four times further away from us than the, than the moon. Um, we don't actually get to see this, but you can see this gold part that collects the light, shines off that little mirror, and the camera that I built is in the back there. Oh, so we can't see it. You can't see it, and this part on the bottom um, collects energy from the sun to provide electricity and sends the data back down to the Earth. So you just mentioned that you worked on a camera, correct? Correct. And so tell us maybe just what this camera does and, and how it's so important. Um, what this camera does is that it takes um, pictures and it's a little bit like your cell phone. It's a 40 megapixel camera and Ooh. this is actually what it looks like um, in real life before it got installed. Okay. And it has 40 megapixels, which <clears throat> nowadays isn't so many, but these 40 megapixels are out that far away in space, and they work um, a little bit in with light you can see with your eye, but it's mostly an infrared camera, meaning it sees beyond the red, okay. and that means that it has to be cold. This camera operates at 388 degrees below Fahrenheit. Oh, a little chilly. <laughs> <laughs> so we couldn't be up there at all. Yeah. Well, and so Marsha, tell us how you were able to be blessed with an opportunity to work on something this grand. So in 2001, NASA issued what they call an, an announcement of opportunity Ooh, okay. to propose to build this camera. And so I had a team, and one of the things we were good at at the University of Arizona is making the detectors. So this is part of the detector package, 16 megapixels <laughs> worth, and we assembled this on, on campus, and, wow. and we proposed and won the proposal competition. And <clears throat> Is this, this your team? <laughs> uh, so Some to speak, <laughs> indeed. So this is a model of the, a life-size model of the telescope oh, that um, was made out of stuff you can go buy at the hardware store, so it wasn't <laughs> so expensive. And this was the initial team that started working on it. And by the end, I think over 10,000 people had worked on the project. And I'm actually in this picture right about there. I was going to say, <laughs> can you try to find Marsha? <laughs> this was taken at Goddard Space Flight Center in, in, in Maryland. And so, so Marsha, if you don't mind, just share, if you can, reflect. Just, I mean, some of the best memories that you've had of being a part of this project and this mission. Oh, there are many, um, many good times. I mean, the, um, the first time that we actually had NearCam assembled and we tested it in a test chamber that simulated space and it right. could see the artificial star. And then, you know, this picture that's up here now is one of the early release observations that was taken, and it's also what's on my code here. you got to look at Mars. And we call this the cosmic cliffs, okay. and this is actually a cloud of, of dust and things. And this, this now is uh, another representation of, you know, this was an iconic picture from Hubble. This is what my camera shows. And then the last one is what the mid-infrared camera shows. Okay. And when we first started getting these data, when the, we could see that we could detect light, the telescope was working right, we broke out the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> and how fitting that you're now in champagne to share. That's right. <laughs> and this, this picture, um, you can see a red sort of tip. That was 
on the tip of one of those fingers in the previous pillars Ooh, of creation. They did look like that. And that red signifies a place where new stars have formed and, and have done what we call ionized the gas, excited like you do in a neon light kind of <laughs> thing. This is another picture I just love because the action is actually hidden by some dust out in space. And there's a star forming there, and as part of the formation process, jets get thrown out. And this picture to me was like, I, I was just stunned at the detail. You can see the all colors. these little dots and so on. Just amazing that we could um, make a picture like that. Absolutely. Let me give you a, 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 a 10 second astronomy Please lesson, <laughs> which the project I have most been involved with is one trying to find the most distant galaxies to form after the Big Bang. And so okay. they, they, gas starts to accumulate, the galaxies begin to have stars, those stars heat up and clear out some of the material around them. And finally, after something we call reionization, you get to see the galaxies. And we're, we're poking back into this era here. And we want to see, see how this whole process unfolds um, less than a billion years after the Big Bang. And you're saying and that the telescope helps us capture that. That's right. And this is a, a picture that my team has taken um, using our camera. We had 400 hours of observing nice. time. And right now, probably not for long, but we have the record for the most distant object found. Ooh. So we'll see if we keep that record. But and you'll be these popping pictures are just, again. you know, stunning to go and paw yeah. around and look at. And I thought it was useful to point out that even though we look at these exotic distant things, we can look at things in the solar system. So this is the planet Uranus, which really? is the one just beyond Saturn. Okay. And what people don't realize, because you can't see them when you just look with your eye, it has rings just like just Saturn. Like Saturn. Okay. Rings that you only see in the infrared, basically. And this is by far the clearest picture of those rings that's ever been taken. So, so we're studying inside the solar system as well as outside. all <laughs> this distant <laughs> stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, Marsha, is there anything that we need to know coming up soon or maybe any advancements that we should be getting excited about? Or? Well, we're, we're into our second year of operation. And I think what you're going to see is we're starting to spend more time on looking at um, what we call exoplanets, planets okay. orbiting other stars. Mars. And we hope to find some one that maybe would be like the Earth, and we'll see. Wow, Marcia. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> we'll hold off our excitement for that. Yep. All righty. Well, of course, Central Illinois, thank you so much. For Marsh. Oh, and really quickly, tell us more about your lecture tomorrow before we go. So um, tomorrow evening, I'll be giving a lecture that goes over some of these things in more detail, and I'll show you more details of what it looked like while we were building the telescope Gosh. and some of the um, just fantastic results. So Time and location for that? Um, so it's on campus. On campus. Um, and at the U of I. At the U of I. And if you check the astronomy web, U of I astronomy website, it gives you exactly the details. I believe it starts at 7 o'clock. Alrighty, Marsha. We can't thank you enough for your time and all the work that you're doing in space and beyond. I get paid to have fun. <laughs> I, I wish, we, wish we could all enjoy that too, Marsha. But of yeah. course, thank you so much. And still to come on the morning show, we're also going to expect a warm and wet Wednesday ahead here on Earth. And our meteorologist Jacob Dickey will share what you can expect for today too, up next.